right, so first off, gonna give you a little bit of background and ourselves and how we took our passion for art, design, painting, and turned it into a successful six-figure business. We have this really controversial belief that creatives deserve to get paid for their services. Yeah. Glad you all agree. So we're gonna to talk to you today a little bit about our journey and how we invested in ourselves to create a successful business and a few tips on how you can do the same. So first we'll introduce ourselves, go through the, the background so you know who we are. Um, I'm Phoebe, this is Roxy, we get confused mixed up a lot of the time. My mom can't tell our voices apart on a podcast, so um, blonde, brunette, she's two inches shorter, yeah. She's a Taurus, I'm an Aries, we're very different. And so about five years ago, we met and we started a business called Pander Design Co. And then we started a podcast called Drunk on Lettering and then we started a nonprofit called Ladies Who Paint and we'll tell you a little bit about all that. But as we said, I'm Phoebe, um, I love sports. We get, do a lot of work in the sports field. We'll get into that later. But um, I grew up in Philadelphia, moved here to San Diego about six years ago. And I had a job in the action sports industry. I was doing a lot of designing for bikes, bells, all the collateral that goes along with that. And like probably many of you in the audience, I got burnt out. Um, there wasn't really much upward mobility at my company, so where did I turn? Instagram. And that's where I met my lovely business partner. I slid into her DMs and, yes, uh, found Roxy. Uh, she was total celebrity on there, 15,000 followers at the time or something, and reached out to her and said, hey, do you want to start a lettering club in San Diego? But I'll let her tell her background. So I'm Roxy, also super into sports. This, posting pictures like this is how we get jobs with major league sports teams. Um, <laughs> and I grew up here in Southern California, down in San Diego. And when I was in high school and college, it took me a really, really long time to find graphic design, which is what I ended up studying. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I dropped out of college twice kept coming back trying to figure out what I was supposed to do and eventually I took a graphic design course and realized that's what I wanted to do with my life. But I'm very indecisive so I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do in graphic design. So once I got out of college, I started working odd jobs and I really just was craving getting back to drawing, putting pencil to paper and creating stuff and I was really obsessed with lettering. So I also turned to Instagram and I started sharing photos of just me drawing things, um, painting things, just experimenting, trying new things, and I was posting every day, and I started building a following. And as I started building a following, people were asking me if they could hire me to design their logo or if they could purchase my artwork. And so I realized that social media could be used as a tool to create your own business. So that was the goal that I had in mind. I was working a very boring design job, no creative fulfillment, and I was just investing all my time in drawing and sharing on social media. And that is when Phoebe reached out to me and we kind of sparked something in each other and brought out the entrepreneurial spirit in each other and the fearlessness. And we ended up starting our first endeavor together, which was a meetup group. So everyone needs a lettering club, right? Duh. So, <laughs> So cliche, we started one of those and we're doing monthly events around San Diego, getting uh, our posters seen on the Jumbotron at the Padres game, very exciting. And drink and draws, similar to what you guys have going on up here. But um, yeah, just really trying to create that community, get everyone out of their um, element, back out from behind their desk and working with their hands. And as we were doing this, we realized that we worked really well together and just really wanted to start a business. So this is where we started making products. Um, you know, started with the normal stuff like pins and stickers, prints, that kind of thing. And this really um, was where we connected and, and we're just collaborating all the time. And we decided to both leave our full-time jobs. So again, we, we get bored very, bored very easily, so we started making these products, hosting these events, and getting to be completely creative, no boss telling us 
what to do. And so we started wanting to take it bigger. So we helped out on a couple of mural projects. We painted some electrical boxes in San Diego. And then we decided to invest in ourselves, follow our dreams, and quit our jobs, which our family was not stoked on. Um, Phoebe's boss tried to convince her not to quit. And everyone was very scared for us. Um, but we knew that we had this thing we wanted to create, and we kind of saw that worst case scenario, we would just go get a job again. And um, we took a leap of faith and started working for ourselves, and we created Pander Design Co. So high pressure situation, our first mural was for little startup called Rebel. Uh, yeah, we spent a bajillion hours on this, got paid like nothing, but we were just itching to get off the computer and do something with our hands. So this was a dream for, for us, and um, I think it turned out okay. Uh, <laughs> no major incidents, uh, no spilling of paint, it, it worked out well. Um, I think we broke our projector, but yeah, so we did this first one, posted on Instagram, which led to another business reaching out to us. And this was our second mural, and this is down in Liberty Station, if you ever make it down to the um, San Diego area. So it's still up, and we are always trying to convince them to let us like, redo it, because you, know, you always hate what you did four years ago. Um, but this went viral on social media, and people just have still, to this day, are taking photos, sharing, and that's really what has helped us get more business, more mural gigs, and it's, it's gotten out of control. <laughs> We realized at this point that we weren't just creating beautiful art pieces. We were creating a marketing strategy. We were creating something that was tangible for businesses to see the value in. It wasn't just something that's gonna add to their walls. It's something that people are going to engage with and is gonna get them more visibility on social media. So when you work for yourself and you work with people that are not creatives, you have to be able to present your value in ways that they can understand and relate to. So. Another thing that's really important for working for yourself or in any avenue, if you work for a company, invest in your own authenticity and the clients will follow. So for Phoebe and I, we definitely put our personality into everything we do. Um, we're very fun, if you couldn't tell, and um, we love bright colors, we use fun lettering, everything we do is custom and different, every project looks different, um, but we have our own style and personality that we add into our work, so our clients know exactly what they're getting from working with us. So we always try our best to always be authentic, put ourselves out there even when it's scary, and the clients will come. So. You have to ask yourself these questions, and um, this was really tough in the beginning because we were, as we said, we were making these products here and there, but you know, you can only sell so many pins, and how much is that going to add up to to pay your rent? So, you know, we were exploring the mural thing, and that was getting bigger and better, but we really had to dial down: um, who do we want to work with? Who would want to work with us? And who can afford us? So. Uh, for us now, we've, we've kind of figured that out, and some examples would be um, Irvine Spectrum, if anyone's headed over there. We have um, two murals. Actually, I don't know if that one's there anymore, but <laughs> this was um, a temporary situation when um, you know, a store is going in and they have the barricades, but the Smile at Strangers is right next to the improv. Um, so yeah, commercial real estate, shopping malls, they're all striving to get people uh, off of Amazon and coming to their spaces and spending time. So murals really help with that. Um, this is, again, an example of commercial real estate, a local shopping, or not shopping center, apartment building in their parking garage, uh, helping the residents feel more comfortable and like that their, their community is, is a great place to live. We also have worked with corporations like Target. Um, they like murals, so that's always helpful um, when Target comes a, a knocking on your door. This one is obviously in Ocean Beach in San Diego, and we did a few vinyls inside for them as well. Another thing that we, is the biggest thing we suggest for you is to invest in professionalism. You can be fun and have your personality out there, but at the end of the day, you've got to be professional if you want to work for yourself, if you want to get a good job. 
we cannot stress enough how important it is to be professional because that's really going to help do your job of selling yourself. And it's going to make it a lot easier when you're going to pitch big numbers to clients. For example, these two establishments serve coffee and one serves it for $7 a cup and the other one is 99 cents. And I hope you can figure out which is which. So think about this when you're curating your website, your Instagram. This is your first impression to your clients, even the way you respond to emails. These are all opportunities to show how professional you are, to showcase your value, and so that people aren't shocked when you present them with numbers that are perhaps bigger than you're comfortable with. Um, it's certainly taken us a really long time to get comfortable pitching large numbers, but our work has value. And the way you present yourself directly correlates to how comfortable people are going to be to give you their money. So the more professional you can be, the easier it's gonna make your life when you're going to try and get jobs. It's really gonna help you sell yourself and um, that also relates to how you get work. And, um, Phoebe's gonna to talk to you a little bit about doing outreach and going after those clients. So a lot of people ask us, how do we get these jobs? Um, it, it looks like Target does just knock on your door and sometimes they do, but you know, it obviously took us a long time to get to that point and we still are doing outreach to this day. What does outreach mean? It means cold emailing, cold DMing, cold calling, and I love doing it, it's really fun. Um, so, Exactly this, our scent box. We are harassing people to um, look at our work. We attach two beautiful presentations and are targeting these companies we just spoke about earlier, who can afford us and who we wanna work with that th they be fun. Um, so marketing agencies, creative agencies, yes, they do logos and branding, but are they able to paint murals? Probably not, so we can help them with that. Uh, commercial real estate, and, and hotels, restaurants, all those kinds of places. So we are targeting all different cities. We have a goal of painting a mural in all 50 states. Roxy just conquered Hawaii last week. So very exciting. Shout out to Montana, if anyone's in the audience. From <laughs> we do that all, all the time. We actually said that about South Dakota and someone was in the audience and got us a job in South Dakota. So outreach at its finest, there you go. Um, the next slide we show the craziest example. This is in Tasmania, which is the island south of Australia. People take boats there to Antarctica. So we did a mural there. Did they need Roxy and Phoebe to fly from San Diego, California to paint this custom mural for them? No, we, we put ourselves in front of them. So exactly that, what we just showed you, emailing them, introducing ourselves, asking to hop on a quick call, the timing was a little tough when the time difference there, but we made it happen. And um, we were in Australia already for a conference and popped down, but you know, you have to make these opportunities for yourself. It doesn't have to always feel passive and like just waiting for these clients to come to you. Another thing that is really important to invest in is protecting yourself. So our biggest thing that we want to share with you is to always use a contract to protect yourself. This is another way you can be professional, is by having a contract ready to go that you can just customize for each client. And if you don't have a contract for yourself, we sell templates on our website for design services and murals. We make it very easy for you because we've learned all the wrong things and we've tailored it to the right thing. Our actual first contract that we ever got signed, we basically just Googled mural contract nothing came up. And so we pulled different things from, you know, construction uh, contracts and design contracts we could find online. And um, the client actually signed it and um, we had our legal friend take a look at it. And he started laughing and we're like, oh God, what does it say? And he was like, you have it in here that if they move businesses, you get to keep the mural. So I don't know how we would make that work of keeping the wall, but they signed it, so there's a wall out there that belongs to us. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be scary. Um, just basically think of everything that could go wrong and put something in the contract about it because, again, clients most of the time are not creatives. They have no idea about murals or design, and so we put things in our contract like artistic alteration because most of us in this room probably know that colors on screen 
look different on the wall in paint, but clients might not necessarily know that. So protecting yourself, and we say that the wall could look up to 25% different than it did from the rendering. Who can judge that? I don't know, but it protects us. So make sure that you're always protecting yourself. So lastly, we wanna talk about investing in stuff that you believe in. Roxy mentioned earlier that we have a nonprofit called Ladies Who Paint. So when we get bored, we're like, oh, let's just start a nonprofit. That's really easy and fun. And uh, that's exactly what we did last year in 2018. Uh, started a nonprofit, and that was really interesting, figuring out all the, you know, the legal stuff and paperwork. But we made it happen, and this is just, um, it spawned from us going to a mural festival ourselves, painting a mural, and it was 40 artists and only two of them were women. So that uh, ratio was a little off to us. Uh, and we also experienced sexism, as you can imagine, on construction sites and different things. So we just want to bring awareness and, and make it easier for women to paint murals and make cool things. So we started Ladies Who Paint. These were our 10 artists that we brought to San Diego last year to each paint a mural in the East Village neighborhood. If you, any of you are down there, we encourage you to check them out. We have a map on our website of all the different locations, but um, artists from New Zealand, Brazil, all over. We're doing it again this year, and it really just changed the neighborhood. Uh, Here's some examples of the murals that were painted. Those stencils on the left were hand cut, and uh, yeah, she flew them here with her from New Zealand. So that was pretty crazy to see go up. This artist is from Vancouver. Um, it was really amazing. And the girl bonding week, we had them all in an Airbnb together, did fun events every night. Shout out to Kelly, who was a volunteer that came out yeah. and helped paint. Um, so we found a hole that women weren't being represented enough in the muraling industry, so we decided to start the first ever all-female mural festival. And it was a lot of work, but it's something that we believe in, and it's been so overwhelmingly positive and great and has added to the community of muralists, making us all feel connected and um, all the things that women go through while they're painting that people can relate to each other and feel like they're in it together. So if there is something that you believe in, you can do it and create something that makes a change in your industry or something that you see as a problem. Because if, if we can start a nonprofit literally knowing nothing about starting nonprofits and raising enough money to fly 10 women from all over the world to San Diego, put them up for a week, get all the supplies. If we can do that, you guys can too. And if any of you are artists or designers that are women, um, applications are open for two more days. So if you want to apply, now's your last chance and you could potentially be adding to this lovely gallery that we're creating. So overall, we'd like to say F the starving artist stereotype. Not sure for a lot of curse on this thing, but uh, yeah, we want everyone to start charging more, using contracts and empower each other, invest in yourself. <laughs>